Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today. My name is Courtney Anderson, Director of Product Marketing at DeepCell, and it is my great pleasure to introduce to you REMI, our new platform which takes the power of morphology and magnifies it with AI. It is well known that cell morphology can be highly indicative of a cell's phenotype and function. For instance, here we can see a homeostatic microglia whose morphology indicates a healthy environment and surveillance state. However, reactive microglia respond to a trigger and release pro-inflammatory cytokines, proliferating and changing their morphology dramatically. And if there is neuronal degeneration, microglia will further alter their morphology and engage in phagocytosis. Now these differences are very clear and striking to the human eye. <clears throat> But in this case, not so much. Here are two cells, one that is drug sensitive and one that is drug resistant. By eye, it is very difficult to tell them apart. Cell morphology is highly dynamic and complex and analyzing morphology by eye can only tell us so much. And so this demonstrates the strong need for a more quantitative, high dimensional, unbounded approach to assessing cell morphology. A more quantitative, high-dimensional, unbounded approach would magnify the insights into a cell's phenotype and function and turn cell morphology into a quantitative, high-dimensional ohm, or the morpholome, similar to how methods have been developed to assess the genome, transcriptome, and proteome at high dimensions. The problem is that current methodologies to assess and characterize cell morphology have been limited to either imaging or sorting with labels. Until now. At DeepCell, our approach to morpholomics is to provide single-cell, high-dimensional, unbounded morphology analysis. We offer reliable, rapid, and standardized collection of bright field images of each cell in a sample. We have foundation deep learning models for high-dimensional feature extraction of known and novel cell characteristics. We incorporate label-free sorting of morphologically similar cell groups to gain further molecular and functional insights. And lastly, we offer interactive software to store, visualize, and analyze cell images and high-dimensional cell descriptions. And today, I would like to introduce to you the REMI platform, which provides high-resolution imaging of single cells, high-dimensional analysis of morphology, and label-free sorting all in one platform. REMI directly takes real, high-resolution, bright field images of each individual cell and is powered by DeepCell's human foundation model for high dimensionality. REMI also has the ability to sort cells six ways based on their morphology without the need for any labels. Furthermore, you can collect these viable, minimally perturbed cells for downstream analysis, such as single cell RNA sequencing. And it is an end-to-end -end solution with our Axon data suite, which enables real-time data visualization and analysis from cell images obtained on the REMI instrument. So let's dive into each of these components a bit more. First, I'd like to highlight the REMI instrument. This is an AI-powered benchtop instrument for high-dimensional morphology analysis. Some of the key features of this instrument is that it takes high-resolution single-cell bright field images. This is also a completely label-free workflow and we can also sort six ways. By doing this, we can maintain viability for, of the cells for downstream analysis. And as I mentioned, the AI component means that there's real-time characterization of the cells through AI using our human foundation model, which I'll talk about in a moment. We also offer flexible experimental designs and a fast workflow on the instrument. Now here's a depiction of the instrument and some of the key components. We offer two types of kits, the REMI imaging kit, which consists of reagents and consumables, including our imaging chips, for those interested in doing an imaging only workflow. If you'd also like to sort, we have the REMI sorting kit. This consists of reagents and consumables, including our sorting chips, for those that would like to do the imaging plus sorting workflow. And you can see here a depiction of the instrument with the drawers open. We have the reagents drawer where all of the reagents that DeepCell provides will go. And then under the main door, you see where the stage for the chip loading is, 
the sample tube where your sample preparation would go, and then the negative outlet tube, which is where it collects all of the cells that do not get sorted. One of the key components of the REMI platform is the Deep Cell Human Foundation Model, or HFM, which assesses 115 cell morphology dimensions. It combines deep learning and computer vision methods to extract cell features that quantitatively and reproducibly represent cell morphology. The deep learning aspect of the HFM is based on a self-supervised learning algorithm, is trained using millions of cell images from many biological human samples, and it detects differences in cell morphology without labeled training data meaning that the HFM is ready to use on day one without the need for additional training. The Deep Cell HFM is unique in that it combines deep learning and morphometric features, providing both accuracy and interpretability, and it is a fast and effective cell feature extractor, enabling real-time cell classification and sorting. The HFM contains 115 combined embedding dimensions, including 64 deep learning derived embeddings and 51 computer vision derived morphometrics. So let's talk about the distinction between these two a bit more. Morphometric features can be considered human interpretable, quantitative metrics of cell morphology, including cell size, shape, texture, and intensity, as well as biological features such as blebbing and pigmentation. They also map to measurable and recognizable concepts. And shown here are some of the examples of the 51 morphometric features that we compute, starting with simple and obvious ones, such as area and perimeter, to the ones that measure granulations and more subtle features. You can find a complete list and description of these metrics on our website in our HFM panel sheet. Deep learning features are information-rich metrics of cell morphology with powerful discriminative capabilities, but they may not be human interpretable. They are quantitative descriptions of cell features derived from deep learning models based on neural networks. And of note, AI-derived features can outperform traditional morphometrics in cell classification tasks through identification on non-human interpretable cell features. Hence, why we have combined deep learning with morphometrics to provide both accuracy and interpretability in a fast and effective cell feature extractor. Now, the final component of the platform is our Axon data suite. This enables real-time exploration of data obtained from the REMI instrument. Some of the key features of this data suite is this is where you can store, review, and organize all of your runs. You can also visualize all of those embeddings that I just mentioned as morphology UMAPs. You can also view or overlay cell images directly on the morphology UMAP. And you can explore these AI embeddings interactively through comparative analytics and graphs. You can also train custom classification models and define cell populations of interest for collection in up to six wells, as I mentioned earlier, since this can sort up to six ways. And we also have a number of data sets available for you to explore on your own. We have one that shows the identification of cancer cells, exploration of cancer cell subpopulations in a melanoma sample. You can also get immune cell diversity in the tumor microenvironment. And we have a most recent data set we just released where you can explore cell death pathways in GERCAT cells. So please visit exploredata.deepcell.com to look at more of these data sets on your own. Now that I've introduced the three components, I'd like to talk a little bit more about how they come together in a simple and streamlined workflow, starting with dissociation of cells into a single cell suspension, followed by imaging of those single cells in flow, and then characterization of those cells in real time with our AI models, all of which is done on the REMI instrument. And then in the Axon data suite, you can analyze the data. In addition, in this data suite, you can select cell populations of interest in real time and then collect those cells for further downstream analyses, such as single cell RNA sequencing. 
You can go from sample to a publishable figure in just a matter of a few hours. Because the sorting process is gentle and label-free, that also means that the cells are minimally perturbed and still viable at the end. This then makes them ideal to use in downstream analyses. Therefore, we assess the effect of the REM-I sorting on single-cell RNA sequencing. PBMCs flowed through the REM-I platform were compared with control cells stored in medium using either a single-cell targeted immune panel or single-cell whole transcriptome workflow. On the left is a UMAP of gene expression profiles from the pre-sorted and sorted cells, while on the right is a correlation plot for the two conditions. The two samples overlapped with each other in the UMAP plot, and gene expression levels showed high correlations indicating no significant effect on gene expression after sorting on REM-I. We also compared the effects of REM-I on cells to that of traditional facts. Here, human neutrophils were first isolated from whole blood and then split into three conditions, unperturbed, stained and flow sorted by facts, and unstained and unlabeled and sorted by REM-I. These cells were then lysed for bulk gene expression profiling by RNA sequencing. We can see that the REM-I sorted cells had minimal gene expression differences compared to unperturbed cells, and much fewer gene expression differences compared to FACS sorted cells. This data demonstrates that FACS significantly induced up and down regulation of pathways in neutrophils, while the REM-I platform minimally perturbed the cells. We are seeing the REMI platform being used in a number of key research areas, including cancer research to assess tumor heterogeneity and malignant cell detection and enrichment, in developmental biology for the detection of induced pluripotent stem cells, cell activation and differentiation, and cell cycle states, and also in cell and gene therapy for compound screening, functional screening, and manufacturing QC. And there's many more areas where the technology is being applied. These areas can be bucketed into two broad categories, sample level profiling, which some examples include heterogeneous sample evaluation and characterization, disease detection and enrichment, and drug and CRISPR perturbation screening, and also the cell level profiling, including cell health status, cell state characterization, morphology as a biomarker, and integration with multiomics. And I'm now going to turn the talk over to my colleague, Ryan, to highlight a few examples from each of these categories. Thank you, Courtney. In this section, we'll show REMI datasets, which are focused on various cell and sample profiling applications. Let's first look at a simple dataset, which is comprised of polystyrene beads, two cancer cell lines, the A375 melanoma and CAUB3 ovarian cancer cell lines, and an immune cell line, the JERCAT T lymphoblast cell line. Each class has distinct morphological features, with the highest visual similarity among the cancer cell line images. Images were mixed in silico, with representative images from each class shown in this bottom panel. Then the deep learning and morphometric features were extracted using our human foundation model, as Courtney's described. The extracted features were standardized and projected into a two-dimensional UMAP basis. This morphology UMAP shows a clear separation between the polystyrene beads and cell line images. Among cell lines, while the JERCAT immune cell population is clearly distinct from the cancer cell lines, the two cancer cell lines show greater overlap, which is in agreement with our expectations. When we train a classifier to distinguish these four classes, we see that HFM features that distinguish beads and the three cell lines work with very high accuracy. Class confusion was highest between the A375 and CAUB3 cells, which is as expected, and a combination of features contributed to classification. We've plotted a subset of them here. Some are our morphometric features, computer vision features, and others are deep learning features. While morphometric features like the maximum radius and the small set 
of connected bright pixels distinguish the jerk hat and bead cell images from the cancer cell images. These features were nearly identical between CalV3 and the A375 cell images. But the deep learning features, on the other hand, are able to distinguish the cancer cell lines. For example, this deep learning feature number 11, which is shown in the rightmost panel, distinguishes A375 in green from CalV3 in red. Next, I'll show how the RunMy platform can be used to characterize heterogeneous samples. In particular, here we profile the microenvironment of melanoma tumor samples. In established, uh, to establish ground truth cell identities, we also imaged human melanoma cell lines, which represent each of the microenvironment constituents, then combine those images in silico with the tissue samples. On the left, we see a UMAP, which is based on morphology features and colored by cell type. On the right is the same UMAP, but colored instead by cluster. Using only morphology, we're able to separate the tumor cells from immune and stromal populations in a completely label-free manner. By looking at re representative images from each cluster of the immune cells, uh, we can see that immune cells have subtle but separable morphologies, which include variation in size and in granularity. Another notable finding is that pigmented melanoma cells, shown in green to be melanoma on the left, and represented by these cell images, are morphologically distinct and cluster separately from non-tumor cells. This is unique as current technologies such as flow cytometry, will require known markers to detect pigmented cells. While with the deep cell platform, we've detected these pigmented cells based on morphology alone, without the need for labels. If we select only the melanoma cells from this data set and project them into a new UMAP, we can see that there are three major melanoma groups, the dissociated melanoma biopsies, the melanoma cells from the cell lines SKML 1 and 2, and pigmented melanoma cells. Within this pigmented melanoma group, we can identify two different clusters. By sampling representative images, from each of these, cell, each of these uh, populations, including non-pigmented and the two different pigmented melanoma cell populations, we see that, especially among the pigmented cells, while both are pigmented, one has blebbing around the cell membrane, which suggests that this pigmented population could be undergoing apoptosis. If we examine the distribution of mean pixel intensities in each cell image, we can confirm that, indeed, these clusters, 6 and 9, are more pigmented than the non-pigmented cluster 2. In summary, here the RemI platform was able to reveal heterogeneous morphology among these cancer cells, including pigmentation, which can be difficult to identify with conventional methods. All of the data shown here was analyzed using our Axon data analysis suite, so there is no need for additional computational tools or programming to reproduce this analysis. Furthermore, if you wanted to collect these cells for additional downstream analysis, such as single cell RNA-seq, you can easily select the cell population of interest in the software, and the instrument will sort the cells for you, keeping them viable and intact. This dataset is available to explore for yourself on our website. It can be found at this URL, exploredata.deepcell.com. In the next data set, I'll show how REMI imaging can identify characteristic morphologies of cell health states. Jerkat T lymphocyte cells were treated with cytotoxic methods, like camptothacin, storosporine, and heat. Following this induction or treatment, the cell death was quantified by flow cytometry, 
using uh, anexin 5 as a marker of apoptosis and cytox co-expression as a marker of necrosis. By imaging each condition, we can then study morphology as a readout of apoptosis or necrosis. In this top row, we have flow cytometry plots containing estimated fractions of uh, viable, apoptosis, necrosis, and dead cells. We've organized the cell health state roughly left to right. In the middle row are the corresponding morphology UMAPs. These are based on REMI images of cells from each condition, and the color is according to the proportion of cells that are in each region of the UMAP plot. So cells are accumulating in the area of the plot, which is more red. You can see that cell morphology is clearly altered between conditions. And by looking at cells sampled from each condition, you see that uh, each condition has uh, characteristic morphological features. Notably, cells which occupy the same flow cytometry gate uh, can be distinguished based on morphological features, which indicates that morphology can monitor subtle changes in sample health status and assess sample quality. Um, for example, here we show 18 hour 2 micromolar sporosporin treatment next to a, a 5 minute 70C heat shock, um, which by flow cytometry have similar necrotic proportions. But sporosporin treatment is known to represent a more advanced stage of necrosis. And this difference can be detected with REMI imaging. In this next data set, we'll show how REMI imaging can distinguish cell lineage, type, and state in PBMCs. For this data set, we've included B cells, CD4 T cells, NK cells, activated CD4 T cells, monocytes, and uh, macrophages, which have been purified from multiple donors. These purified samples provide a ground truth reference against which we can compare images of unpurified PBMCs from three donors. The first comparison we'll make is at the top of this hierarchy between myeloid and lymphoid lineages. Lymphoid and myeloid cells are expected to be distinguishable. Morphological differences have been documented in the literature. They include prevalence, of vacuoles, differences in the prevalence of vacuoles, a distinctive cytoplasm, and distinctive nucleus. Uh, in addition, simple features like size and granularity, which are often measured using the facts forward and side scatter, can be used to isolate these lineages. When we apply our human foundation model, and fit a classifier to identify the morphology features that differ most between the myeloid and lymphoid cells, we find measurements of size and shape, uh, maximum radius, maximum caliper distance, uh, long ellipse axis as, as expected. In addition, we find deep learning features uh, that are even more discriminative, as indicated by the high importance scores, and also the clear differences in the distributions of these features in each class. This classifier achieves an accuracy, which is greater than 90% in distinguishing lymphoid and myeloid cells by morphology alone. Next, we'll look at how REMI imaging can distinguish differentiated macrophages from monocytes. These classes are again separated with high accuracy greater than 90% by morphology alone. And we find that deep learning features are top differentiators, which emphasizes the value of deep learning uh, to this technology. In this next data set, we'll show an exciting study that we did monitoring drug response using morphology as a readout. We treated K562 lymphoblast cells, which are isolated from leukemia patient, with chemotherapy drugs. Uh, we were interested to see how morphology changed over time with treatment. And 
we're especially interested in morphologies which might be associated with resistance. Shown here are the results of a time course experiment where these cells were imaged 12 hours, 3 days, 5 days, and 8 days after treatment. We collected a separate time series from controls uh, in treatment with two, chemother two chemotherapy drugs, a hypomethylating agent and a histone methyltransferase in inhibitor. Um, each of these drugs resulted in cell death, which can be seen by the movement of these cells to the far right compared to the controls. But what's exciting is that at three and five days, pockets of cells which were resistant to treatment could be identified by morphology and are isolated for further study with other assays. In this final, final data set, we'll show an example of morphology as a biomarker. Morphology can, used as, can be used as the basis for population analysis of a heterogeneous tumor sample in much the same way that we commonly use biomarkers. Here's the workflow. Using morphology analysis, uh, multiple heterogeneous uh, cell groups, sorry, multiple morphologically distinct cell groups can be identified within both the biomarker uh, positive and the biomarker negative tumor fractions. Uh, now these morphological groups may correspond well with the biomarker, or in many cases, they'll offer additional information on top of the biomarker. With REMI, we can sort each of these morphology-based cell groups. Then the cells can be subjected to molecular assays to assess the functional significance of these cell groups. In this experiment, we used CRISPR to knock out 11 genes in human embryonic kidney cells. Uh, these genes were previously linked to morphology and impacted morphological features included cell size, nuclear size, and vesicle formation. In the morphology UMAP on the left, we see four distinct cell morphologies which were induced by the knockout. Each of these morphologies was then sorted and processed by single-cell RNA-seq, which produces the transcriptional UMAPs that we can see on the right. Notice that the transcriptional profiles are shifted, but not nearly to the extent that morphology changed, which indicates the advantage of morphology in studying certain biological systems. Although the morphology groups don't separate clearly by single-cell RNA-seq, they do have significant transcriptional differences and signatures, which we can use to link morphological with molecular differences. Uh, I hope that these data stories have convinced you that the power of morphology can be magnified by AI with DeepCell's REMI platform, which is a fully integrated solution for single cell high dimensional and unbounded morphology analysis. I'd finally like to thank our many collaborators around the globe, as well as all of you for joining us today.